All right, we are here. This is round one should be going up. Um, this is the 2024 New Year's tournament um, brought to you by Thea. And looks like there should be quite a few players. We'll have to see how many rounds it ends up being and we'll, we'll update our um, sheet here. I suspect eight or nine rounds, um, but we'll know. Uh, shortly here. The site is struggling a little bit to get going. Uh, we'll be playing this today. Hopefully you can see it just fine on the screen here. Yeah, it looks good. Um, neat. It actually generates the pairing code now. So this, this, this. Yeah, it, it'll either be X and O, uh, or it'll be my classic O1 into top eight, into scoop the whole thing, because that's the best thing that I know how to do. That's the thing I have the most practice with, of course. Yeah, or we could maybe do the classic uh, O2 drop and then move on with our life. But I think, um, I think no matter what, I'm just gonna battle it out. So. Um, they've added spectate if somebody wants to spectate. Um, I think the spectate is pretty sweet. I like that Pavel is willing to um, sort of adjust it as we need it. Um, currently, both of the hands are hidden, um, but I may be able to convince him to get like a streamer client of some sort uh, or something for casting or coverage that we can do where we show both or just one of the hands um, to be able to give good coverage. Um, but we'll have to we'll have to see how that ends up shaking out. All right, so this is our opener. Uh, it is a little slow. I think we can get rid of the Merlin goat and probably the snake here. Uh, we'll keep this for ink. The rest of this is okay. Maybe we can get rid of one of these as well. Uh, not a terrible, well, not a great draw, but it's fine. Uh, the be prepared can be good. Um, if the audio levels are weird, let me know. Um, I've adjusted the audio on this a little bit. Like, I want it to still be there, but if it's a bit too quiet, we can uh, we can tweak that a bit. Um, looks like we're probably on the mirror of some sort, which is fine. Hand's pretty good for that. We definitely don't need this. They go. Um, we're probably running up Mal on our next turn here. Likely inking teeth and ambitions. Unless they're on steel. Um, if they are on... Okay, so they're on steel. I'll probably be inking fidget here then. Uh, we could play it into the fairy, but I'm probably just going to blast it with teeth and ambitions. 
Um, Maui is better in this matchup than Fidget, I think. Let's play this, draw a card, and pass. Um, so since we're against the Steel matchup here, we are going to want to... Um, be a little aggressive. Uh, we have kind of a rough hand for that. But this gives us the option of dealing with the Blue Fairy on our next turn. Um, we can sing either with the Maleficent to just hit the Rabbit, or we can just ignore it for a turn. I don't really want to ignore it, because them drawing free cards is not ideal. Um, we can, like, play the Rabbit and Teeth it. I can wait one turn, because they can't really get any value out of it anyway. Um, and I think I can do this. And then I'd like to try and keep the Maui if we can. I'm going to get rid of the Maleficent Sorceress number two. Play this, draw our card, and pass. Just slow down a little bit, but it'll be okay. So the big scary card that we're going to end up running into here is... Uh, potentially Beast next turn. They do have a pretty wide board. Um, we're going to be able to use this Maui to hopefully clean a little bit of it up. If they quest with any of these, we're just going to um, bash into them with this Maui. Uh, or potentially this Mim Fox. We'll see. Okay, given how this shook out, we can get rid of the Fidget. I would like to do, hopefully, two things this turn. We can't do Maui plus Teeth and Ambitions and still attack something. Uh, but I can do Maui hit the Maleficent, and then we can sing Teeth on the Blue Fairy. That's an option, which I think is what I'm going to go for. Uh, the Mim is also an interesting line. We end up being able to kill about the same amount of stuff. I think we'll just do this because it's more cost efficient for us here. So we'll hit there. I will sing this. Sing, hit here, hit the blue fairy, and then say go. It's unfortunate that they were able to um, storm on the Maleficent here, because that would have been really good to sing, um, hit this, and we could have even drawn from the rabbit. Would have given us another line where we could have played the fox, potentially, um, after hitting with the rabbit as well. If they decide to do this, that's fine. I just want to draw cards here. We have more rabbits in the deck. If the Maui is still alive, we can use it to just draw two cards here. And if they opt to just bounce the Olaf and then trade with Maui, that's also fine. Okay, so we can... I think ink the Maui. And then we're going to play this Tremaine here. And deal with this rabbit. So this gives us a clean board. We have a pretty controlly top end hand. And we can draw a little bit of extra cards next turn to hopefully hit our um, our ink as well. So a random Tinkerbell is not terribly threatening here. I think I'm gonna cast this raw. Actually, we could put the Tremaine back in our hand with this fox here, and then we could sing this and cast these two. That might be better. That's actually pretty good, because that gives us access to a Maui to deal with this Tinkerbell. Let's play this. We could shift Tink here. And, or we could shift Tremaine to deal with this Tinkerbell. I actually weirdly don't hate that, but I don't think we need to do that. 
I think we can just do this and then say go. I'd rather have double Tremaine in my hand, I think. Because it's a very good follow-up to the B preps. Like, we may end up doing a Tremaine next turn, but we might just end up inking the Maui. Playing Elsa to set up a bigger blowout. It depends on what they play. So they, they did have a Strength of the Raging Fire, so I'm glad that I didn't shift the Tremaine here. That would have been a bit of a disaster. So they bounce the Tinkerbell. Are they looking to replay it this turn? They don't. Okay. So then I suppose that we don't need this Teeth and Ambitions. It is good against... I think I'm in a Tremaine. It's good against Blue Fairy, but the Maui, I think, is more useful with the Elsa. So I think we're going to get rid of this. I'm just going to play out the Tremaine. And get rid of the Mim. And then we're going to quest for two. And we're going to start getting on the board here. And if our opponent just ends up playing like a singular threat, um, we can... Just start slamming Tremaines for a bit. We can't be double... Um, double swords for a little bit yet. Like, we can hit this Tremaine... Or this Elsa with this Tremaine pretty easily. Um, we even have the ability to shift it and put him back in our hand. I think that's pretty good, actually. Because then it gives us a lot more Tremaines to work with. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to shift here. It's going to make them have to sacrifice a creature character here, Elsa. And then we'll play this other Mimfox uh, to bounce the double Tremaine back to our hand. So we won't need the Maui as much then since we have two more Tremaines. <sighs> They're going to struggle if they're only playing one card a turn here. And we do have the Elsa with these foxes to potentially bully something that they're playing as well. Ideally, we're going to need to start gaining lore a little bit faster. They inked one of their Tinkerbells. They may have another one. Uh, they opt to Fox. Probably going to deal with the Maleficent here. Uh, they kill a Fox. That's fine. Uh, so let's, I think, just go for both and then play Ursula here. Draw a card. Um, do I want this to be ink? Or do I want this to be a card? I think I'd rather it just be ink. Our hand is pretty good already. And then that opens up the line of double Tremaining on a single turn if we want. So here's an Elsa. That's fine. And a storm into dealing with the Maleficent. Okay. Uh, so I can just kill both of these if I want with the Tremaines. I don't necessarily have to do it now. I could also just play an Elsa and tap these two, play the Olaf and pass. Thanks, Attack for Two, appreciate it. It's very early for me, but we did not sleep very well, so that's a benefit. It's not a great benefit, but uh, we were up pretty late trying to figure out what my deck was going to be. I eventually settled on a deck list that I'm mostly happy with. Are they drawing us two cards? Oh, that's awesome. That is... That is spectacular. So, I think... I'm just gonna hit here. I'm going to Tremaine.
And I think I'm just going to Tremaine again. We'll use it as a removal spell. If they end up killing the Tremaine now, I don't think I'm as worried about it. Because um, we have this Ursula here. I don't think that we need this second Mini Mouse. I think I'd rather have the potential to ink. Um, we can bounce the Mim and do the, the Tremaine play twice again next turn. Okay, we get ursula -ed. Basically, the game plan at this point is we're just going to bully the, them with this Tremaine. Because we can literally do this play again um, on our next turn here. So we can quest here, quest here, quest here, quest here. We ink this other Minnie Mouse. We play Snake. Bounce the double Tremaine, play the double Tremaine. Um, I was, my number of Tremaines has gone through a lot of revisions at this point, and I've sort of settled on two for now, um, mostly because it enables this kind of stuff, which you don't really have access to if you're not running more than one. Um, but because it is uninkable and we are running Elsa's now, something had to give, and I wasn't cutting rabbits and I wasn't cutting bee prepareds, so... We ended up having to uh, shave down on the Tremaines a little bit. Um, I think the number that we have is good. They're probably going to double hit us here. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's even more fine because they're just dead then, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that'll be game one. All right. Alright, we're queuing up for game two. We are currently 1-0. and Alright, so let's update this, and then I'm going to go see if they have indicated how many rounds it's going to be. Um... It does not say so far. We shall figure that out at some point. Um, so we want the Minnie Mouse. Minnie is very good in this matchup. Ursula is good, but we can wait on Ursula a little bit. Um, going second, the Snake is a little less important this early. I think this is fine for the Mulligan. Okay, that's okay. Uh, let's get rid of a Maui. Let's say go. Uh, in this case, I think I can ink a goat. The goats are nice, but really you don't need them until much later. Let's ink a Tinkerbell. And they run out of Maleficent. Not a big surprise. Um, I think we're going to run out the Surfer, and we're going to see if we can aggro them a little bit. Uh, we are inking Fidget in this matchup almost 100% of the time. Uh, Fidget is generally to contest opposing stylish Surfers. So we're going to use this to try and gain lore. We can realistically, you know, get anywhere between, um, you know, four to six out of this before they're able to really comfortably deal with it. Uh, I will ink Maleficent. We're just going to run out the rabbit here. And then quest and say go. We have a good play in a couple of turns, which is nice. I am a little worried if they play Beast here, because um, they can do Beast into Tink. So they did Beast. Uh, it is possible that I can Teeth and Ambitions the Beast with the Rabbit. Um, I don't think that I want to do that. I think I would rather just Quest with the Surfer. Um, maybe we bounce the Rabbit and then play the other Maleficent. Uh, 
I think I'm gonna bounce the rabbit first. I should have quested with it. That was a big mistake, actually. Uh, I am gonna get rid of teeth here so I can play this. Hopefully that doesn't cost us too badly, but they should be at, or we should be at five. Unfortunate, but it happens. So they could have a line of going tank into swords, which does clean up this board. Uh, we do have the rabbits in hand still done. They may be looking to like double let the storm rage on on the mini, which is fine. If they end up tapping the beast, we can Maui it. Okay, so they Tinkerbell. So they don't totally blow out the board, um, but they do clean up quite a bit of it. If they end up questing with beast here, we'll get to Maui it. If they don't, that's fine. We'll be able to set up a be prepared in a couple of turns. Uh, we don't need Olaf in this spot here. Um, our hand is a little awkward. So if I quest with anything, then the Tinkerbell just gets to kill everything. Which is unfortunate. I could opt to just trade into what they have. Does make the be prepared a little less good, but it does save us a bit of lore. Uh, I could go to six. I don't think that that's necessary here. Could just try to draw some cards. I think my play is going to be we're going to wrap it. And then I'm going to Maleficent here. And then I'm going to play a rabbit of our own. And then say go. Okay, they play another rabbit. Interestingly, I may just play Ursula on my turn. Especially since they're not, um, they haven't really progressed their board much. They're just drawing cards. I'm debating whether or not I do Maui on the Tinkerbell or not. I think I'm just going to play Ursula. Draw a card and say go. I don't really want them to be able to easily kill the rabbit um, to deal damage to the Ursula. And I want them to be under a little bit of pressure here. The intention is actually that we're going to be prepared and then ideally sing it with the Ursula, but we'll have to see because we can clean the board up and then just play another Ursula. Depends on what they're yeezming here. They yeezma my Ursula. Okay, that is fine. Even better if they don't quest here. Oh, that's great. Okay. That means that we have the Maleficent as a big follow-up here as well. Um, given our hand... I think I can ink this. Uh, yeah, I've been around. This is my main game now. I have been around some. Um, but the... Uh, the games that I've been playing have not been as much streaming. I, I, my streaming cut back about 60-70%, but I think at the start of this year here, um, now that Lorcana is really starting to pick up Steam a bit more, um, I will be streaming quite a bit more. And I think I'm going to try and um, pivot over into streaming for YouTube more. Like, we'll stream on Twitch, and then we'll, we'll take the content and try to dump it over to YouTube. Okay, so I think this is good for us. They're going to just have a Benja, because we'll be able to kill the beast here with the Maleficent. Uh, we can also Tremaine. 
But Tremaine isn't good enough yet. I was gonna save this Cusco uh, to be able to play it down, but I think in this case we're just gonna get rid of it. Um, because we, I really would like to get the Beast off the table. Because if the Beast is their best play in that spot, then the Maleficent is in a very good position here. Yeah, so they play an Ursula, that's fine. If they attack with Benja, then we're going to um, hit it with the Maleficent and play Tremaine. If they play another thing, then we won't do that, I guess. If we draw an Elsa, it'll be pretty good. Um, Fox. So this is six. Fox means we should probably just ink something and jam an Ursula. We can even put the Maleficent back into our hand. Let's play Ursula first and see where that leaves us. Because we get to draw a card off of this. We draw Maui. I think we ink the Maui. And then I think I'm going to quest with Maleficent. And then I'm going to put it back into my hand with the fox here. And then say go. So they are going to gain a decent amount with the, this Ursula if they want. Um, but this does set us up in a way that we can uh, opt to bash it again here. Uh, I think this card game is very good. I think it has... It needs a bit more. Like, it needs a few more cards for it to really truly be... Um, like, exceptional or excel. Mostly because it's... It's new, right? It's it's not... It doesn't have all of its sets yet. Uh, there's only 408 cards or whatever. Um, but with set 2... Or with set 3 coming out, they should be doing the... Um, organized play as well. Which really should open it up um, pretty well, I think. So, without having a be prepared here... I think we have to play Maleficent on Ursula. We definitely have to ink something. Maybe one of these goats. And then we could opt to snake the Maleficent here. Or the Mim Fox. If we switch this with the Mim Fox, then... It gives us the ability to Mim Fox something next turn. Which I think is probably fine. It, it untaps a thing as well. So that the, their Mim can't just deal with it. So they play Elsa again. They may trade into this Maleficent just to get it off the table so I can't bounce it again. Um, if they clean up some of the material on the board, like if all of this is tapped, um, I do have this Tremaine. And I also have the Maui as an option as well. They may be trying to deal with this Ursula here. We'll have to see. They bounce the Elsa again. Interesting. We can clean up most of the board here if they choose to attack and not clean everything up. But if their play is just to keep replaying this Elsa to slow us down... Like, they are definitely going to have to do a little bit more than um, just hitting our things a little bit. I, I don't, don't think that's going to be enough. Because they go to 13 here, but we can clean up this board. Uh, do I want to clean up the whole board? So we can do Maui. We can hit Benja here. We can Maui on this. We actually have the Fox, too. We have a lot going on here. I think we don't need the Zoloff. I don't think Zoloff matters. We definitely want this Maui to deal with this Mim. And then we want to deal with this Benja. I'm debating if I care about this Maleficent or if I just want to play Ursula. Like a second Ursula.
We could also fox and goat, or fox and friends on the other side. We could rabbit and then fox the rabbit. That I don't hate. Do something like this. Draw an extra card, and then bash the Maleficent, and then say go. Yeah, that I like in this matchup, because they don't actually have be prepared. They can deal two damage to everything. Um, but just Elsa on its own is not going to be enough, I think. Most of the time. If we had two more ink, we could actually Tremaine twice in the same turn with a snake. Uh, but I think my play is just going to be to do more Ursula's. Oh, they don't even play the Elsa. Okay, that's good for us. If they have another Mimfox, they can kill Ursula here, which is not ideal. Um, I, I do think Storybook Brawl is being revived-ish with... Um, there is a new game that is in the same spirit. Uh, it takes a lot of inspiration from it. Uh, called Fairy Tale Fight. Um, it is pretty similar. Uh, it has a lot of the same, you know, spell mechanics, and it's a pretty good auto battler, I would say, if you want to check that out. They're debating if they want to trade, like, say, with the Mim Fox here. They opt not to. So this is a little scary, because we're at functionally 15, 16, 17, so we do need to probably play Tremaine here. Uh, we can probably, like, Tremaine and an Ursula. We're not in a great spot, actually. Let's start with this. We can't double Ursula either, which is not ideal. Um, we can ink Mini. Well, before we ink Mini, are we 100% confident that we're playing an Ursula here? We have 13. I think we are always playing an Ursula. So let's start with that and draw a card. Okay, so we do have a Be Prepared as a safety valve if we need it. Um, we could gain two Be Prepared now. We could bounce one of these and do it. I think I, think I am better off getting rid of a Minnie Mouse here. Because we do have a Goat and a Mim Snake, so we can get pretty close. I think I am better just playing a Tremaine, draining him for one more lore here, or a functional lore gain, and then going quest, 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 putting us up to 11. So we are questing for 10 currently, so they do have to do something to our double Ursula here. They can gain... If they quest with the goat, that puts them to 14. If they bounce it, that's 15. Replay it, it's 16. It'll be pretty close this game, I think. It'll be pretty close this game. So they play another goat. So they, I assume, tapped both the Ursulas. So we've got two, three, four... Five, six, seven. So that puts us at not enough. So we have to figure out how to deal with what they're doing over here. We can't currently sing Be Prepared. So that doesn't work. We do need to remove this Elsa off the board. Otherwise, we're just going to lose. So that is pretty factual no matter what, I think. Do they have any goats in here currently? No. So they're functionally at 17. We can play Tremaine once. Which is not enough. Elsa would do it. So we could try to draw a card first. Which I don't think is a terrible idea. Okay, so I think our play is going to be, unfortunately, um, blowing up our board and then just playing a Stylish Surfer, and then hoping that they don't kill us. 
Which is not ideal, but it is what we've got. So there's a be prepared. If they have another goat and a bounce, we're dead. But we have... Let me double check the time. We have 21 minutes left, so we have plenty of time. Let them goat us here, and then we'll play this, say go. If they have goat plus a bounce, then we're done anyway. And there wasn't really anything we could do about that. All right, you got us. Nothing I can really do against three goats there uh, without an Elsa. If we had an Elsa, we might have had a shot there, but... Um, I will be first, same game name. Yeah, the, the last goat there was rough. It's possible that I inked a goat a few turns prior that maybe... Yeah, I wonder if there was a way for me to have gone a little bit faster there. Hmm, it's tricky. The double goat is rough. Possibly just playing the other Ursula, like a turn earlier. Um, we don't need the Be Prepared or the Elsa this early. Double Mini is very good on the play. Yeah, this is a pretty okay draw. Um, we're going to get rid of the snake. Let's say go. Um, with this, I guess we're getting rid of a Teeth and Ambitions. We're going to basically just go all gas, no breaks with the surfers here. Surfers, they go. Um, the plan is going to be surfer on... Uh, surfer on two, surfer on three. Uh, we can get rid of the Maleficent Sorceress here. Play another one. We will quest and say go. Uh, they probably should have attacked here. Because... Um, if I attack into that, then they have an easy answer to dealing with the mini. We could be in some trouble here. If they have a four drop, like a rabbit, and then they also have strength, they can kill one of these, which is unfortunate. If they're looking to let the storm rage on and trade at the blue fairy, I'm okay with that, actually. Because that doesn't really help them as much as they think it does. It is good, don't get me wrong. Um, but we can take out this Benja now. I'm debating drawing two cards here, since they've slowed us down a little bit. Because I'd really like to Maui that this turn, but I want to ink something other than this. So I think we're going to draw two cards. And then let's Maui here. Say go. I don't generally love singing uh, with the style of Surfer, but the way that our hand is textured currently, uh, it is the only way that we're able to get this Maui down um, in a spot that I like. So given that they attacked with this, it more than likely means that they have um, Tinkerbell. Let's play a rabbit first. That is an unfortunate draw. We're going to hit here. Let them draw their card. We're going to quest here. We are going to ink this. And say go. With the way that our hand is, we really need to play an Ursula next turn. So there's the Tinkerbell. Are they going to quest with this beast here? Okay, that's actually not bad for us. Because it means that we can do this. 
which is unfortunately a necessity to try and draw an inkable, and we didn't. Yikes. Well, that's a bit of a beating. Okay, so our, our out in this game now is we're going to be playing an Ursula, and then trying to sing Be Prepared, I think. Unless our opponent plays something large this turn. If they play like an Ursula, we're just going to be prepared, obviously. They're going to bounce and replay Beast. So they'll have four. Uh, given that, I think we can just play an Ursula here then. Um, do we ink the Maui or the Fox here? Maui has the ability to interact with this Tinkerbell favorably. I just don't really have the resources for the Fox, so I think I'm going to get rid of it. So we're already looking to just like slam Ursula's for the next several turns rather than dealing with this rabbit. I opted not to quest with the with the rabbit here. Um, specifically because oh, they're really just letting us draw two cards again. Okay. Um, I didn't quest with the rabbit because we didn't want to play directly into this Tinkerbell unnecessarily. So they have four cards in hand, and one of them is Beast. Okay. So let's... Quest with these, we'll go to 11. We're going to B-prep this board. They do have another draw off of this, but because we have so many B-prepareds, along with these Ursulas, I feel pretty good about this. Um, we could put the Olaf in for pressure. I think given that we have the goat, I'd rather get rid of this. And then just be prep here. If we draw a Cusco, I will play it. Okay. Second goat is not bad here. Okay, it's their turn. So we do have multiple B preps. If they play out a really stellar line... Um, I will likely just be prep again. If they just play a singular threat, I'll probably just play Ursula instead. Like, if they just play Beast and say go, um, then I'll probably just play Ursula. Beast plus Goat puts them to plus 3. That's 14, 15. It's a little rough. We can put it back to 14 with Ursula. I think that's favorable here. And then we can also draw two cards with this. So I'm starting with the draw two cards because it gives us some more information on what to ink. The Surfer is unnecessary here. It's a little slow. So we're going to play Ursula, draw another card, say go. Now we have a line. We have a couple of options here next turn. If they don't Elsa this Ursula, we can sing Be Prepared and blow up the board and then just play another Ursula. Okay, so they're looking to just burn us out here. Which I can appreciate. I can definitely appreciate. So let's do this. We'll play an Ursula. Um, we don't need this Maui anymore. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm debating if I just play the goat. That'll put us to 12. I think I play these two. If our intention is to try and race, if their hand is just all goats and mims, like we may not be able to race. If they replay the goat,
So do we have enough to win here? Three, four, five, six. That puts us to 17. 18, 19. It's not enough. Okay, I do have a line that can work. It's basically the same thing as what we did before. Except it gives us a little bit more juice with the... Uh, because we have a bit more lore. Or a bit more ink, rather. So do that, put him to 19, and then we'll play Ursula. And then I'm going to play a goat directly. Um, is there ever a line that this opens up if I ink something? I don't think so. If they have double goat, they've got us. It has to be exactly double goat or goat and a bounce. Elsa doesn't necessarily do it. It does buy them a turn, though. Because uh, we do have the Maleficent here. So this does block us from being able to play the Goat this turn, which is a little weird. But we have the Kuzco as a follow-up, so I think it's fine. So they draw an extra card. So they Ursula us, and I think we've got them. GG. Close game. Very close game. Alright. Oh, I didn't update my score last time, but it is 2-1 and one and 1 for the round. So we did take the round down. It was a very close game. Very, very close. This is a good game. Um, pairings, this one. Played three games. I don't remember who went first. I think I did. Um, and then I went first and I won. Yeah, that was a really close game. Um, Steel is a tricky matchup. Um, it is a new deck, a new-ish deck. Um, generally, they're on something like uh, this, which I'll probably be playing on stream a little bit. Um, Maybe not after the tournament today, but probably at some point. Because um, I, I do think that this deck is pretty sweet. Um, especially for ladder. Um, hey, Zero. Yeah, it's, it's going well so far. Got the, the old 1-0. and um, So at least we're not 0-2 dropping, so that's a good start to the day. Um, so here's the deck that we're currently on. I'm, I'm really glad that Pavel finally got this um, added, because I think it's very useful to have a good visual like this. You played the mirror. Oh no. What have you done? Can't believe you put them into this the universe like that. Um, so we've got three Kuzcos and six 1-3s. So the 1-drops are nice. Uh, obviously, they still enable the snake line early or the teeth if you need it. Um, they are also nice to combo with Ursula to give you sort of Tremaine protection. Um, but I think the Cusco gives you an additional turn two, um, whether it's you play a one drop into a two drop, or whether you just play this on two into, say, a Maleficent on three. Um, just gives you other lines other than just one drop plus Snake um, to play before turn three, right? Because a lot of the deck is, is three drop and higher. Um, the Fidget is a concession to specifically Mini Surfer in the mirror. Um, in general, especially if you're on the draw and they play a Surfer Mini, there is not a lot of very clean answers in these colors, at least not that early. Um, yeah, it is absolutely... It can die to Teeth. Teeth is a bad card in, in 
this like in the mirror generally so it gets inked a lot or it gets mulliganed because it's pretty crap it doesn't really do anything to any of the other cards um like but if they play a mini on three and you follow it up with a fidget they may just have to not do anything with their mini for a while and that's usually good enough you know, you don't ever want to be in a spot where they're just able to freely quest. Yeah, it's since Fidget comes down a bit later, like, you literally don't have to play it at all if they don't run out Surfer Mini on 3. You you only really use it as a response. So previously, um, there had been the idea of doing Crab uh, so that your minis can bump into their minis. But if you already have a Surfer in play, I don't want to be wasting my Surfer's full turn to just hit their surfer and then also needing to play a crab like that I'm, I'm relying on getting two different cards to try and deal with one of their cards whereas fidget is sort of an all-in-one package for it and there are some matchups where they just don't have ways of dealing with evasives super well hey alice yeah this is um this is lorcana um it is a new card game new-ish i mean it's about um what a little over six months it came out now um, and there is a client that is a fan-made client, um, Pixel Born. Oh my god, I can't type today. Um, and the client is totally free currently, um, has all the cards, you can just get in and play. It's a lot of fun, um, and we're playing in a, in a sweet tournament today, so... Um, I thought it was okay, but it's hard for me to want to commit to it as my main, um, as my main game, given that there's not as much money in it, at least not yet, um, as there was for Storybook Brawl, of course. Um, uh, the deck list you can find right on screen, or you can have a link to it, uh, here as well, um. Uh, but yeah, it, so this is, I'm, I'm playing this game in paper, and I'm hoping that the organized play uh, that they have for this game is good, which they are announcing. It is like, um, like Pokemon and MTG kind of paired together a little bit. Like, uh, a lot of the designers came from Magic originally. Um, if you ever played Keyforge, um, Keyforge had a very similar resource system um so your cards all of your cards can essentially be played face down one a turn um as ink unless otherwise stated so if you see up here where it's got the little symbol this is your inkwell symbol if it doesn't have the inkwell symbol around it then you cannot put it into the inkwell they're considered uninkables um so you sort of have a balance um kind of the opposite of the way that magic is where magic you're adding um like a lot of land in your deck whereas here you're trying to balance out having things that are not lands in your deck and trying to get that ratio right is is tricky um mulliganing is a little bit different um you look at your opener and then you put as many of them as you want on the bottom and then you draw that many and then you shuffle and that's your mulligan so it's generally pretty smooth um it uh it's pretty cool. I mean, they're they're adding, hopefully, some pretty good... Thanks, Jabrizi. Um, hopefully, they're adding some pretty good competitive rules this January here. That's what the rumor is. Um, that they're going to get that out while they're starting to do the spoilers for, um, for set three. Because set three will be coming out in February. 
And with set three should also be coming their organized play, uh, whatever they decide to do with that. So organized play is generally um, like championships or regionals or some sort of path to playing it more competitively um, and more organized. So something like these tournaments, but in paper. Um, there has been some paper tournaments and I've gone to some when I can. I'll be going to one on the 19th that weekend that is a sealed and, a, and another constructed tournament. I'll probably bring a deck very similar to this. Um, hey, Enrico. And yeah, I, I think it's pretty fun. It's really cute at the very least um, because it's Disney characters. Like, you know, you get a lot of that. Like they're adding an Eeyore to the game, which I think is dope. I wonder if I, do I have the Eeyore picture? I do, I tweeted it, I think. Let me see. How do I see my own tweets? Oh yeah, look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. Look at his butt. Come on, how do you, how do you not love this? It's amazing. I don't think the card is particularly exciting. It's pretty good and limited. Um, I doubt that it'll see an overwhelming amount of play just being a common, but it makes me hopeful that maybe they'll add more, uh, more donkeys. I, I just want them to add an Eeyore that makes it so that all creatures or all characters enter exerted. Just like everybody needs to be sad like Eeyore. Yeah, the, like, one of the things that could be done is, is, you know, whatever the regionals or championships or worlds or whatever that looks like could feed into Disneyland or Disney World. And then they already have the space there to definitely do a, a thing like this, you know? So, I would like to, um, you know, getting back into playing sort of the... Uh, the competitive card games, because I used to play uh, Magic a lot. Um, I, I do find this enjoyable. Uh, I do like Auto Battlers quite a bit, though. I, I could definitely eat up a lot more hours um, playing things like that as well. But this is a new, a brand new sort of card game, and I haven't been able to really be a part of like a brand new card, like a TCG game release in my lifetime. Like I got into Magic not incredibly early. Um, so obviously the game was already, you know, years out before I started playing it and being sort of at the ground floor, but I think it's really cool and it gives me good opportunities to, you know, sort of, um, make content. Um, I, I digest a lot of information about decks to try and, um, figure out the best ways of attacking the meta and things like that. And I, and, and I do like to try and share that if I can, which is one of the reasons that I stream, you know, I stream without a delay so I can answer questions and things like that because while I, I like winning, most people do, but what I like more is being able to provide, you know, good content and good good coverage with this as well. It's one of the things that when I was playing some of the other tournaments, um, I didn't enjoy them as much when I had to do it on a delay. Um, I, I would rather just do casting or coverage if I'm if I'm gonna have to play on a delay, honestly. Like the tournaments are cool, but you know, coverage is great. Hey Steadfast, how are you? Thank you, thank you. It is nine rounds today, turns out, which is about what I thought. Um, given the number of players, that is an absurd amount of rounds. Um so we'll have to see if we can last nine hours rounds. Hopefully the rounds don't go terribly far past time. Uh, they might. It is not impossible. Uh, there was an announcement which is... Oh, turns, right. Um, that is a good question. Uh, let's find out. How would we find that out? We could find it out with standings, I guess. Here, let me drag this over here. And then we'll see if we can scroll all the way down in the standings. 
Uh, the top cut could be tomorrow. I think what will happen is whenever they get to the point of doing the top eight, they will probably take a vote and then see if they can find a time um, tomorrow to do it instead. Honestly, the top eight should be pretty short. A lot of the things with this game that take a long time, even in even in best of three, are generally like the the in between games stuff, like going to time and, and doing that whole thing. The last couple rounds probably won't be so bad, but it depends on how they want to do coverage. It could be tomorrow. If it is, we'll 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 manage. Looks like there's 282 participants in this one. So this one is even bigger than the last one. So this tournament, I can actually show you here, um, I think. Events, this one? No, this thing? No, this thing? No, this thing? Uh, where is it? Somewhere exists, oh, here it is, okay. Oh, I could have just looked here, I'm just big dumb. All right, whatever. So. The tournament is Swiss best of three, 50 minutes. So the prizes are as such, and it was free to get in. Um, So originally they had had it uh, where first place was a thousand and second place was a hundred, and then third place was ten dollars, and then nobody else got anything. Um, they flattened it out a little bit um, to something that looks more like what a one k, or in this case, um, uh, eleven hundred, would pay out. Yeah, it's it's top sixteen for the card. Because that's what the most important thing is, and then everything else is just a bonus, of course. Um, interestingly, I am ranked pretty high on the uh, ELO for the Lorcana Play Network, because they have not had that many tournaments so far. And because we... Because we went 7-1 and one last time, um, so the, the top 8 players were... Um, Farinante, and I believe uh, Alex. So because they drew in the last round, they didn't really get that as many points. So... Oh no, I made top eight. I, I got eighth last time. Uh, Zach ended up getting uh, bumped out on breakers, actually. Zach Bibbins. He got ninth. I took exactly eighth last time. I don't know if it even has... It might have my... Uh, can go into this event, right? Uh, standings? Yeah, I got 8th. By, like, the skin of my teeth. Because um, Zach had a 50.16 and I had a 50.94. My breakers were not great. should pay attention to if the round is going up though I suppose no, we're still on round one um, let me see where they're at still in turns I suppose I don't know if there is a I don't know. I'm looking. It doesn't look like it's up yet. I assume that I'll get blasted about it. I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but yeah, so we did we did pretty well last time. Um, rallying from our our loss uh, of uh, the first round. Interestingly, against this match. Uh, we won uh, round one, Echo. 
It was a very close game against uh, Steel Purple, where we managed to play just enough Ursulas, uh, and we sung Be Prepared twice to play another Ursula. Um, but playing the, uh, the Ursula following up after the Be Prepared is very nice. Singing it, it gives you such a huge tempo swing. Such a huge tempo swing. Nine rounds is going to be rough. It'll be okay. I am fully prepared for nine rounds. It was like ten hours last time for eight, so... Free from the capitalistic ads, yeah. I don't even always notice them, because they're all just automated, so... Um, it was a very close uh, purple-steel matchup, uh, where we ended up having to sing Be Prepared with Ursula, play another Ursula twice... Um, to be able to race there. Uh, they literally just had, like, goats and bounces for the last ten lore. Um, but we played enough Ursulas that we could just barely eke it out. Um, but because we're running four Ursulas, it helps a lot to be able to, to do those sort of grindy battles. Um, but the, the steel... Essentially, it was this list, right? So the, this list generally doesn't have as many, like, big, bomby things. They have a lot of, like, you know, flood the board with little stuff or whatever. Yeah, Ursula is awesome. I, I think... I don't know if I would play this deck without four Ursulas. I, I was... So here's what we're running today. And I was debating my numbers of, like, Elsa and Tremaine and Ursula. So... I've tried one Tremaine and three Elsas with the four Ursula, and I really didn't like it that much. Tremaine opens up some really interesting lines when you can shift it as well. Um, the Elsa is very important to improve the Steel-Purple matchup. Uh, without the Elsas, I think the Steel-Purple matchup is not necessarily 50-50 or favored at all. Obviously, it is still just a purple matchup. Sometimes it's just, you know, you, you do purple stuff and then you go to them or whatever. Um, but overall, I think that matchup is very tempo dependent. And Elsa allows you to take that tempo back from what they're doing. You know, you play an Ursula or two and then you Elsa them when they Elsa you. That allows you to open up for Maui to deal with their things or Tremaine, Maleficent, etc. To, to sort of come back from that to be able to close out the games. Because the way that they close it out is just elsa and you. So if you have that uh, to, to counter what they're doing, it, it ends up being a bit of a beating for them. Uh, more than what we had originally anticipated when we were doing some testing with it. Um, I, I think the Elsa is very good. And it is also good in the mirror as well. Because it is generally unexpected. And you can you know play your Ursulas, play your Elsas. And it just gives you more... Uh, late game bombs to work with, I think. Yeah. It just gives you a lot more tempo, big bomby plays that you can deal with, uh, which generally ends up being pretty favored. And then we're also running Fidget today. Um, Fidget is, uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but it is a good call and response card to Surfer Mini, almost exclusively in the mirrors. Um, also, it's fine against other random red decks that are playing Mini Surfer, but if they run this out, you follow it up with a Fidget, and then all of a sudden they just can't attack with it favorably. And generally, the Teeth and Ambitions get used as ink in this matchup pretty aggressively, because they're bad generally. Um, so you're not as worried about the Fidget's two toughness in that matchup. It does make it a bad card in a lot of Steel matchups, but it just is ink there, and that's fine. Uh, it ends up being better than the crab to solve the surfer problem because you don't need a surfer to be able to interact with the surfer then. Okay, so the next round is up. I think that Maui is always a four of for me. I 
I don't think I would go below um, four of a Maui. But that's, if it's, well, hang on. Let me, let me mulligan here. So we're going second. Uh, we can get rid of Ursula and Tremaine. Uh, this hand is a little awkward, but we do have a Maleficent Sorceress. We can ink an Olaf to play an Olaf if we want. And since we're going second, we kind of want one. Ah, good luck, good luck. So we're on blue something. Maybe blue steel? I think I'm kind of on board with playing one Olaf here. We'll see what their second color is on whether or not I want to play out a fidget or not. I was just talking about how there's some matchups where it's still good. They've inked two quills, so they're almost certainly not on steel. It would be very rare for me to find them to be on steel, I think. This is probably just blue-red popsicles. It could be steel. They could surprise me. Maybe their whole hand is quills. Okay. I am open to being surprised. I think I'm just going to abandon the fidget here. Since we don't know for sure, I'd rather just play out a Maleficent Sorceress... and assume that they're on steel. Blue steel has been pretty popular lately uh, because they kind of beat up on the new steel purple deck and they're good against a lot of the aggro decks. And then generally they're okay against the um, sort of this flavor of deck as well. Okay, we have a Maui to deal with the Flaversham next turn, potentially. I think we're going to quest with both of these. I'm going to ink one Teeth and Ambitions and just play out a Rabbit. Let's say go. Still don't know what their second color is, I don't think. If we do know what it is, I wasn't paying enough attention. Which is certainly possible. Nick Wild, sure. The way that this is playing out, it feels like blue-red popsicles to me. Which means that our hand is pretty good. We have this as a follow-up to B-Prep. If they opt to draw with popsicle here, then we just Maui it. I'm not too worried about it. Probably ink... Either the Teeth and Ambitions or the Cusco. Probably the Teeth and Ambitions. Given that they're likely to be on Tremaine's. Teeth and Ambitions. Maui. Maui bops the Flavor Sham. We just quest with everything. Maybe they're mono blue. That'd be cool. That'd be super cool, actually. It is unlikely that they're mono blue. But you just never know sometimes. Yeah, here's a be prepared. Yep, that's fine. Unfortunately, we can't quite play Elsa, but that's... F oh, sorry, Ursula. But I don't think I would anyway, because we don't have the ability currently to play around Tremaine. So I think I would rather just play... Well, since we do the Rabbit, I think I'm going to play Cusco plus Rabbit. I was going to play Maleficent plus Cusco, but we might end up having to ink the, uh, the Maleficent Sorceress. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do this. Say go. We have a pretty spicy hand. Tamatoa. Yep. Uh, I will ink this fox if I have to. Ideally, we don't have to, but uh, if I don't draw another inkable, I would still like to get some ink down. Given that we drew this, I think I can sing it with the rabbit. We don't necessarily need to go that fast. Well, I guess we're inking a fox no matter what. It's fine. Uh, we play Tremaine. 
Tremaine to deal with the Tamatoa here. Then we quest. Put him put us up to eight. Send it back. Another Tamatoa would be unfortunate because we don't have quite enough to bounce the Tremaine and replay it yet. Uh, the Maleficent Dragon. That's fine. So we have some options. We could... Ursula? I think I Ursula here. Draw a card. Not too worried about a single Maleficent Dragon here. We do this, and then I think... We're going to draw two cards here. I don't know when I'm going to be playing this Maleficent Sorceress anytime soon. So I think I'll get rid of it and say go. If our opponent does something like play Tamatoa here, then we can just start slamming Elsa's. I do need to be pre be aware of Be Prepared coming down, however. If they sing Be Prepared and then they play a crab, that would be not ideal. I think that would be our worst case scenario here. It is manageable because we draw a bunch of cards and we have not be prepared at all on our own yet, but uh, Scar, sure. Scar and Noi. Okay, that's fine. So they're likely going to Scar and kill this. So we'll draw two cards. Draw an Ursula. Into a Mini Surfer. Okay. So if we don't rip a Be Prepared, which would be sort of the ideal draw, I think our play is just Elsa tap these two, quest for three. And then we can ink. I believe we don't need the Surfer Mini. Because we've already almost closed out the game anyway. Yeah, I think it's this. We play Elsa. We tap these two. And say go. And then ideally we make them cast Be Prepared. Like they'll gain their two lore, they'll cast Be Prepared, and then we can follow it up with like an Ursula and a Maleficent Sorceress. Like I would be totally fine with that, and I expect that they'll have to do that. We haven't played any goats yet. We are getting very close to being goat range. If we can hold back these foxes longer, I would like to do that. Uh, but forcing them to Be Prep here and then being able to follow it up with Ursula plus X is very nice. We finally drew a Be Prepared. I think that means that we don't need this Maui necessarily. Especially because we're so close to winning. Like, I don't think we need to be on the defensive here. Will Ursula plus Maleficent Sorcerers for Tremaine protection and then say go. Uh, if they opt to Be Prep again, then I'm likely going to be Ursula plus Goat. Okay, that's fine. Uh, is our play to Ursula again? Kind of. Kind of. I do like Ursula a lot. Teeth and Ambitions. So I'm concerned about Tremaine. If I attack with this, they can just bash it and then Tremaine us. So I don't want to play into that unnecessarily. I don't think I need this Teeth and Ambitions. I don't necessarily want to run out this goat here either. What if we quest with this and then Mim this back? And then say go. So this puts us to eight. This gives us lethal if they don't deal with our board. Another Maleficent Dragon. Okay. So we have two lines on our turn that we can take. We can Maui the Maleficent Dragon. And then play like a Goat plus a Mim to bounce it. Which I don't hate. Because then we'll have the Goat in our hand. Yeah, I kind of like that. 
So we have enough for that, right? 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that'll work. That'll give us a little bit less clock, because we'll deal with that. And then we can also take out the Grandma Tala if we want here as well, which I think we will. Quest here, bounce this other Merlin. And do that, and then we just have them dead on board. Uh, to this in our hand, we don't need the other Elsa. Gaston. Okay. I do like Gaston in this list. It's unfortunately uninkable. So they can clean up the board. Luckily, we have the goat and another Mim Fox anyway. So it doesn't particularly matter. I. It's interesting that they opted not to quest there. Um, it doesn't particularly matter. Because uh, we had it anyway. But, nonetheless, we will go to game two. Will be on the draw. They're going to take the play. So we definitely want to send this Elsa back, and a bunch of these snakes, I feel, are also not very good. Elsa, snakes. I can honestly send all of the snakes back. We can keep the fox and the friends on the other side. Uh, the teeth and ambitions are likely just ink in this matchup. This mini surfer should be pretty good here. Uh, our hand is not amazing, but we do have the ability to draw a bunch of cards with the rabbit. Uh, interestingly, this Cusco was a very good draw. Uh, because we're going to be able to just play this on turn 2 and this on turn 3, it gives us a lot more aggression. And we have an easy way of dealing with this uh, Noi here as well. Uh, with these foxes later too. We play the Cusco and we'll pass. If they opt to Teeth and Ambition this, that's fine. It just doesn't matter. Uh, I will hold on to Fidget just in case they're also playing Surfers. You just never know sometimes if they're playing the Surfers. Uh, so I could take the line of Foxing this Noi. Which I probably should do. While it's free. It does slow this down a lot. Can we afford to give them two extra lore? Maybe. Hmm. Let's quest here first. We're doing that no matter what. Actually, because we have this friends on the other side, I think I'm fine doing that. And we can get rid of the fidget here. Uh, so we'll play the Mim Fox. It, it's kind of too free not to do this, I think. If they want to bin another card, quill something, and then Maui our Mimfox, I'm totally fine with that. They could have Queen of Hearts this too, which is also fine. Yeah, they opt for Flaversham. Makes sense. Let's them draw two cards. They can opt to ink an extra thing if they want. Alright, let's draw two cards. And I think we don't necessarily need this Cusco as much now that we have all these rabbits. Let's do that. Play a rabbit. Say go. Uh, I do like the Cuscos in this match because they're sort of fodder that is able to quest. Um, but we're going to need to deal with this Flaversham. Um, which I guess we can do with just the rabbit and the fox anyway, even if they deal with this fox. It's not that the Flaversham is inherently, like, a huge problem. They have a lot of uninkables in their hand, apparently. 
or their hand is just all gasoline and they just chose not to ink last turn with the quill. I'm on board with that, actually. I think we're close enough to this Maleficent that I would ideally want to hold on to it. Um, I think... Hmm. This is interesting. This is an interesting turn. Um, it is pretty similar to that, yeah. I've added a couple of Elsas, but it is pretty similar to that. I would like to draw a card. Probably just by bouncing this rabbit. So let's do it like this, then I can get an extra... Friends on the other side in. And then I can play this Kuzco. Uh, we could also just play a snake and put a Mim back in our hand. And just ink the Kuzco. Yeah, that's probably fine. We have enough draw. I think that's fine. Like, the foxes are very good to sort of bully what they're doing. Um, so that their board doesn't get too far out of control. Um, so the deck that we're playing is here. Wow, they sing one jump ahead. Interesting. I don't know if Tremaine is really that big of a threat for us here. You can just, like, punch this twice. Hit you once. Fox again. Hit it again. Uh, we have so many cards in hand. I actually don't think I'm going to be surfering at all. Weirdly. Like, we've missed our window for Surfer to be good. Am I winning? I am currently 1-0 in this matchup and in the tournament today. So they played a Scar. Okay. And they're likely going to Tremaine Quest, which we can deal with with the Maui. We currently have no Be Prepared, which is problematic. Uh, Cusco is relatively recent. It smooths out the early draws quite a bit. I think we're going to get Rabbit Glut soon here. If we don't start playing some of them. I'm going to keep the snake in my hand. I don't care if they scar and kill our Maui here. Tomatoa is a, a likely play in this spot. Hadesies. Okay. That is fine. That is not a problem for me at all. In fact, that's great. I want to keep... All of our cards are awesome. What the hell? Like, I want to keep this Olaf as Tremaine Protection... For whatever we follow up later. I think I'm going to get rid of a fox here, weirdly. I guess I don't have the Maleficent Dragon. I can draw some cards. Because I can use a fox to, like, kill the Scar. And it's the same thing as Maleficenting. And then it lets me draw cards with a Merlin. That's maybe better. We'll hit here, and then we'll ink, I think, one goat. And then we'll play the Cusco. Um, that is just this deck. So there's six colors, um, and this color is purple, which is going to be a lot of um, blues. And then I'm also playing ruby, so I'm, I'm playing purple and red. So you're going to see a lot of the, the similar colors within that space, right? Yep, 
Yeah, we haven't really had much for removal, unfortunately. Um, I think I'm going to ink this surfer again, and I think we're going to Maleficent this. Hades. And I'm going to play this Olaf. And then say go. And we actually, because this is 9, we can snake again. If it's not gone, which in this case it's in our inkwell. But that's fine. It's not actually that big of a deal if it's in the inkwell here. I would like to deal with this Judy Hops and this Hades if we can. I don't think that we can really deal with both. So this is your, this is your lore. So each one of these characters you see in the bottom right says one, these have two. Um, rather than attacking the opponent's health directly like in Magic, you are questing um, instead. And the questing gives you lore, which you're trying to get to 20 lore. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to play Ursula. Draw a card with Ursula. I'm going to Fox Mim this Olaf. I'm going to bash this Judy Hops. And then I'm going to get rid of one Olaf, and I'm going to bounce this Fox back to my hand and trade it with a snake. So there are some other decks that I would consider for tournaments, but I think if you're in a really long event, it's sort of like this one, I don't necessarily want to be the one playing the deck with the least amount of choices. Personally, right? I want to be playing the thing that has the most amount of choices per turn. Or per game. And I think that this deck gives you that option, that ability. Uh, I think I do B prep here. Like in best of one, it's a lot different. So I could do Rabbit plus Olaf. I kind of want to draw cards. This is Control, yeah. I think we're going to do it like this. This is essentially like a Control um, aggro deck. Yeah, we don't necessarily need the goats. What I'm actually looking for is just more of our Ursulas and that kind of stuff. So our opponent's kind of running out of juice here. I don't necessarily care if Maui beats up on my guys too much. I'd like to put a little bit more pressure down. Enough that they're encouraged to wipe our board. But not so much that they're going to... Um, love it, basically. I could fox and bounce this. We have enough draw, and I still have a rabbit in hand. I think I'm just going to pass here. It's like a tempo control deck. It, it has burn and draw cards in it. So, a card like this, evasive, is, is effectively flying. This is an aggressive card. There's a goat in this deck. I don't know where he is. I don't know if I played one yet this game. But there's a card that allows us to, to gain lore directly without needing to... Um, I inked one. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a card. It allows us to just gain lore without necessarily having to go through the process of, of questing. So you can't quest if you don't... If you're summoning sick or if you're... Um, Uh, if you just played them, right? It generally has a lot of answers, but it also can play an aggressive role. So it's, it's a pretty flexible... Um, I, I would consider this to be a control deck, yeah. It does play the only board wipe in the game, so the Be Prepared. This is the only banish all characters type of card that exists. Um, I think we're going to ruin our opponent's day here. So I'm going to play Tremaine. I 
we're going to shift a Tremaine on top of our Just Blade Tremaine. And then I'm going to bounce it back to my hand with probably the Fox, because it's the cost is appropriate. And then I'm just going to say go. So this one, when it comes into play, banishes, they, they get to sacrifice a character. Um, they get to pick, but now that we put them back in our hand, uh, yeah. I, I would recommend playing either Steel Ruby or Steel Purple, probably. I'm oh, sorry, Purple Red or, or Steel. Both of those, I think, are good options. And then we'll play a Goat and finish the game with... 10 cards in our hand. Pretty good finish. Alright, we will take our 2 and 0. Oh. Yeah, it was it was a bit brutal towards the end there. Um, so let's report. I believe that we were on the draw turn one. Or game one. So we were on the draw both games then. I really need to, like, uh, keep better track of that. Nope. 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 Undo. Fuck. They went first. I won. Sure. It, it, it doesn't really matter. But I think both of those games were on the draw. Yeah, the... the so if we go look at my stats for my Bomb Pop decks... Like, I, I played a lot of Blue-Red this season... And if you look at the stats, like, 50% against red-purple, this one is probably even worse. Yeah. So this, yeah, on the draw is second, yeah. So on, like, this is a lot of games with a deck to be dumpstered this badly by one of the more played percentage, by percentage decks. So that's sort of what took me off of these different uh, blue-red decks. And they don't all have the same cards in them, right? Some of them have slightly different... Um, yeah, like, I like this deck a lot. I like that it has sort of the, the combo finish where it can gain lore directly and heal. Like, I like a lot of that. But it is... A little rough. Red, blue, blue, red. It's all the same. So the way that the the way that the cards work in this game, like the decks, is each deck is two colors or up to two colors. And then whatever cards you put in there is what you put in there. So realistically, um, whether you call it Amethyst Ruby, you know, Ruby Amethyst, uh, Sapphire Ruby, Blue Red, it, it's kind of all the same. But I don't necessarily want to be playing a deck that is susceptible to um, susceptible to something like this in a longer tournament especially you know if you're taking it to league night I think um, I think you can kind of play whatever but if I'm gonna seriously go to an event and try to win like I want a deck that can at least coin flip with the mirror yeah, so I had to go down to two Tremaines because I added two Elsas. You can only really have so many uninkables. And something had to go, and it wasn't Ursula. So. But yeah, so we are on the two Fidgets, which is an answer to the Mini Surfer. Um, it is a self-contained, doesn't need your own Surfers. Um, the three Cuscos smooth out your two-drop a lot. And I think Ursula is, like, super important because there's Steel. Um, the meta's pretty good. I'll bring up the meta breakdown in, in, in just a second. Um, we I wanted as much, like, draw as possible. And the reason that we ended up adding the Elsas... I uh, appreciate that, uh, Dark Knight. Thanks for the follow. Um, the reason that we wanted the Elsas is specifically to combat the purple-steel variant of this. Uh, if you don't have the Elsas, I do think that we are a little bit of an underdog in that matchup. Because they can play drawing... They can just draw a lot of cards, and they can just out-temple you with Elsas in the late game. Because your Ursulas just aren't enough on their own. 
but if you also have Elsas of your own, of yours, then you can force them to overcommit to the board and then make your B-prepareds better in that matchup. It is a lot closer to a 50-50 with this setup, um, possibly even favored depending upon how their list looks. Um, because Ursula is still very good in that matchup, and then Elsa helps um, the Elsa and the Maleficent sort of help carry it over. Like, ideally, we want one Maleficent in that matchup, and then all of this. Like, we want to ink one of these, and then use all of this, and then, like, bounce a Maleficent a couple times, or bounce the Tremaines to, to sort of clean up beyond this. Because they don't have a good strategy for dealing with large-bodied individual characters. Um, so th this is this is mostly to help the, um, yeah, basically the, the, it doesn't necessarily just win the matchup for you. Like we we've tried I, I, in doing some testing, like we tried even more Elsas. It doesn't just win directly for you, but it does give you a much better chance, especially if you sort of curve out like a couple surfers into, um, into like a a goat Elsa line, so you're just sort of doing it that way. Yeah, Steel Song is kind of like that sometimes, where, you know, you just don't have a functional draw, which is why I'm not a big fan of it in, in tournament play. Again, I, I want something that is consistent, and I think that, that the purple X lists, purple red or purple steel, are some of the most consistent lists, because they get to play the goat which draws a lot of cards. They get to play Maleficent, which replaces itself and draws a card. They get to play draw two cards. You know, they get to play a lot of the things that just rebuy those things, like the snake, which bounces it, the fox, which bounces it. And they get to have very consistent games, which is important over nine rounds. That consistency will generally pay off, especially when it's best of three over a long tournament. I would rather be playing the most consistent deck in the room, which is why this is generally called Jund. I like to call it Bounce House, but um, Jund was a deck that was very similar to this in Magic, where it, it never was an 80-20 in any matchups, but it always felt like it was maybe 55. Um, I, I have tried the blue. The problem with Hades and the Bounce is that you're giving them ink, and they don't have a board wipe. So not having the ability to wipe the whole board is a big problem, which is generally why uh, you want to lean into something like Steel because they have Grab Your Swords or uh, Ruby because of the Be Prepared. Because you kind of need that safety valve against some of the more aggressive decks. I'm sure that the purple-blue with, with Hades and other bounce is probably fine against what I would say the average... Um... like the average deck because it, it, it does have a lot of options. I have a lot more experience with the with this deck and I like it more. That's really all it is. Like I like this card more. I like uh, Tremaine more. I think Maui is awesome. You know, I like Surfer. I, I generally like the Ruby cards more than the Steel cards. And I don't have Sad Beasts in paper. So it doesn't really help me to practice uh, with Steel as much, if that makes sense. Like, I think I have most of this deck. Most of this. I'm missing... Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's just the four Sad Beasts. But that's like $160 or whatever. I opened four boxes and just, like, didn't hit them. So it's, it's a little rough. Another announcement. Okay, so we're good. So we've got 15 minutes left. Let me bring up the meta breakdown... Um, what am I looking at here? Somebody at me. Where did they at me? Tournament chat? No, that's not, that's not it. Uh, what was I looking at? Meta breakdown, meta report. Can I, like, open this? Maybe. 
my god, Discord, why are you the worst? Discord is literally my least favorite thing. Sometimes. All I want to do is bring up this picture there. Okay. So the meta breakdown is roughly like this. Um, and this was over the last week, so it, it does get updated pretty frequently. Um, Pavel dumps the stats about once a week. Um, obviously, this was kind of near the New Year's, so the, the numbers of games played are a little bit lower. You can see that the Sapphire Steel, which is blue and... You can see that Steel is all over the place, right? Steel, 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 Steel. So these two... Like, these three, for me, are all pretty similar. Um, the Steel Song and the Steel Song Flute and the, the Amber Steel Without Wheels. They're all kind of fine. If you actually look at the win rate for this, it's a little under 50%. This, this is just top 100 players' data, by the way. So... The the sort of bounce control, which is which is what this is, doesn't have an incredible win rate. I mean, the the deck with the best win rate is actually th this last week was actually popsicles, um, which was sort of that popsicle control, that blue red that we played last round. Um, the sapphire steel resist is very good against a lot of these other steel decks. Like, it, it's very good against the Hyper Aggro, and it's very good against the Amethyst Steel Control, which is why it's doing well on the ladder, but I don't think it's necessarily that good for tournaments, because it, it doesn't have an incredible matchup against Purple and, uh, and Ruby here. It is a hard deck to play, the the Amethyst Steel one. You can't just pick it up. If Like, okay, if you've been playing... If you've been playing Ruby and Purple for a while, and you try to pick up the Amethyst Steel deck, they play very differently. Because while it is pretty good against a lot of decks, it doesn't play the same as what you're doing in, in the Bounce Control pile. It is a lot of new pilots to it, inexperienced players, that they see this new deck that is beating up on um, on the, the, the old lists of Ruby Amethyst. Like, it does beat up on this a lot, if they're inexperienced with the matchup, for sure. Because they just, you, you draw way more cards than them, you just out-tempo them with Elsa's in the late game, Sad Beast is very good in that matchup, etc. And then, all of a sudden, they just get buried pretty easily but if you're experienced with it that's the case if you're not like they struggle because if you play it the same way that you're trying to play this where you're trading off your resources you're not questing you're not playing for tempo specifically like this amethyst steel deck is less of a control deck and probably more of a tempo deck to me while it does have it doesn't have that same wipe the entire board that uh, that Ruby has. So I, I think that plays some role there. But the meta is relatively diverse. You can kind of play whatever you want. I just do think that there are... Um, I just think that there are some other lists that are better, in my opinion. More consistent, at least. On the ladder, it's a bit of a Wild West. Um, one of the better ladder decks is probably just the discard deck. Um, because in general, it's it's pretty good. Uh, with, the, with the green and the gray, so. Uh, there are some zoo archetypes. So even, even looking back... Bring it back up here. Even looking at the... Oh my god. Can I... Do this. Oh, thank fuck. Okay. So, if we bring this up... I made it bigger. Alright. So, if we look at this, so the, the Hyper Aggro here, and sort of these Steel Song, Mufasa Roulette, like, all of these are just play shit to the board. Uh, no, I didn't say anything about Fidget yet. Um, I'll, I'll talk about Fidget in a second here. So, this Hyper Aggro generally tops out at, like, five. 
It just plays really aggressive. I, I feel like I have one of the lists, something like this, where it plays out like this is a two lore quester, this is a two lore quester, this is a three lore quester, this one can, can technically quest for three. Like it just tries to, to close the game as quick as possible. Just vomits out its hand and, 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 and does that very quickly. It's generally okay on the ladder, but it, it does struggle into steel a little bit um, because all of these are, are one ones. This is a one one, this is a one one, one one, one three. So like their bodies are pretty small, but they quest pretty well. Um, and then there's also something like this, which is similar to that. Um, it plays, you know, Maleficent and Pinocchio, which are both one ones with high lore. Um, plays Arthur and Lafo to sort of protect the Arthur to, to, to keep replaying it. Um, and then some evasives to, to sort of close out the game from there. And then they use that goat again, um, that when it, when it enters or it leaves, it gains that one lore. Um, so they can sort of burn you out from there. So looking at this list, we'll talk about Fidget a little bit more. So Fidget specifically, yes, it does die to teeth. But Teeth is really bad in the mirror, normally. So it gets inked a lot. And you don't really run out Fidget onto a raw board. You only really run out Fidget as a response to the mini surfer. So there are some draws, especially when you are on the draw, that you really need to do something against the surfer mini. Otherwise, if they play Surfer Mini, Surfer Mini, you, you can just get buried. Um, if you have Fidget, if they go Surfer Mini on three, you just go Fidget on three. Maybe they have teeth. But a lot of times, by turn three, this might get inked. They might have mulliganed it. They don't always have it. And if their whole turn is singing teeth to blast their mini, sometimes that enables your teeth to be able to, to clean it up. Like they may not always have things to, to interact with it. And really it doesn't necessarily ever need to kill the surfer minis directly, but if it slows them down enough that you can get to the point of, of doing be prepared, maybe a Tremaine or even just ignoring them and racing them with sort of the, the Ursa Elsa, Ursula and Elsa, then that's really all it needs to do. Crab really wasn't a great solution. It was okay. But the problem with Crab is that you need to have a mini surfer already in play. They have to quest, and then they need then you need to play the crab and then attack it. So then instead of questing with your one of your best questers in the mirror, you're attacking with it, and then also making it vulnerable to teeth and ambitions. So rather than having like a two-card necessary combo, you can have Pascal, but Pascal is never killing mini surfer until turn four at the earliest and that's assuming that they attack and then that also means that you're never attacking with your pascal it, it can be brutal pascal is interesting and there are some decks that make that work with crab but i think i think it is just not enough currently it doesn't mean it can't come back but with just the way that the metagame works it just doesn't it can gain one or two, sure, but I don't really think that this deck is a tempo deck where you need to gain one or two that, that much. I just don't think it matters. You can gain that one or two with many just as easily. I, I think Kuzco in that spot is just better because I just think playing a better card is where you want to be. Rather than playing bad cards, we can just play the good cards. We can play the cards that replace themselves. We can play the cards that don't necessarily need a Rube Goldberg machine to solve a singular problem, which is the way that it feels like Crab is sometimes, you know. So, I, you know, overall, I think the deck is very, very good. And I think that the Elsa does help a lot uh, in these spots. Okay. Okay. 